Bombers come into this final as hot favourites. It's a team boasting a potent mix of youth and experience. The Baby Bombers are the Essendon youth, and these young men are enjoying a strong taste of finals football. Last Sunday, Essendon outplayed the most feared club in the league, the Eagles from Perth, to qualify for the final three. Adelaide, despite its loss to Carlton, is earning respect. The Crows have been put to the test in Melbourne during September and proved to be not only competitive, but dangerous as well. Today, there's no second chance. The loser goes home, the winner earns the privilege of coming back as a grand finalist. It's Essendon versus Adelaide in the 1993 preliminary final at the MCG. It's a very good evening to you all and welcome to the replay of today's preliminary final. Well, if you heard the game on the radio or saw the news highlights, you know you're in for a treat. And if you haven't heard anything about today's game, well, hang on, fasten the seatbelt, because it was certainly the best game played in this year's final series. It started off in bright, sunny conditions, with Gary Ablett being presented with his Coleman medal. Having kicked 125 goals during the season, the first century of his career, he gets the medal from Kevin Bartlett. He started the day one ahead of Dunstall and Modra, but by quarter time today, Tony Modra had overtaken him. And that'll be the first time ever that the Coleman medalist has finished the season actually with somebody in front of him because the Coleman medal is judged on the home and away series. So we get down to today's final. Well, there was no doubt Essendon were the odds-on favourites going into the game, but it didn't pan out that way. It was a thriller minute and played at just 100 miles an hour. So settle back and enjoy it. Commentators at the MCG today, Bruce McAvaney, uh, and with him, Ian Robertson and Bernie Quinlan, and we pick it up at the opening bounce. Essendon to the right again, Essendon going without a traditional centre half forward here, a vacant spot there, Wren won the first tap out of the centre, Denham's quick kick will probably get the job to tag McGuinness, Visca gets uh, a kick away for Adelaide, a half forward, smart in the box seat, went with one hand, Grinvold on him, smart from 55 metres, centering kick to the goal square, not a bad one, Hodges sets himself, chance for lip tack, first goal round the body, looks good, great start, it's the start the Crows wanted. And they've got the jump within a minute. Yes, that's just what they need, Bruce. A lot of people have thought after last week's performance by Essendon over the West Coast Eagles that they would automatically go into the grand final. But uh, that may not be the case. Their biggest problem may be overconfidence here, thinking that Adelaide cannot go all the way. And here it is, a good for the forwards to get a few touches early. Liptak doing the roving. 28 goals now for the season for Liptak. So Matthew Liptak, the first goal scorer of the day. Mrs. Visca, overrunning at Hills, kick off the ground for Essendon, force the ball to Woods, centre half forward. Anderson can't control the football, Jarman has it, tackled by Hurd. Players jump on top of the football, and there's a free kick picked out, it's going maybe against McDermott, and it'll go to Watson. He had to, had to get that free kick, Robbo, he was on the bottom of the pack, McDermott laid all over the top of him, right in the middle of his back, and Tim Watson... Maybe the distance, I think, will worry him, Robbo, just outside the 50-metre area. He'd be a chance. Kicks it high in the air, the breeze is going to go. Well done, Watson. Making a comeback this year and having a very big influence in the Bombers' surge towards the flag in 1993. And great effort there from Timmy Watson. A great kick, I thought, maybe the distance, just outside 50, 50 or 53 metres. And there we see McDermott all over Timmy Watson. No doubt about that free kick. And just on the breeze, it did help it through. Scores level at the G. Liptak and Watson, the goal scorers. In a fast opening. Visca again. O'Donnell, good tackle by Wiedemann. Jarman tries to crash his way through. Can't do so. All in short to Thompson. Centering kick to centre half forward. McDermott, so one captain to another. And McDermott takes the mark at centre half back. Goes short to McGuinness, gets him at half back. More kicks than anyone else in the game this season. Being tagged by Denham Bruce is Tony McGuinness. Centre wing the kick. Somerville, smart interferes, free kick Somerville. Caught between them, smart. There were Grenville at the back. The other interesting matchup, Bruce, Andrew Jarman and Michael Long. Somerville handballed off to Mercedes. Mercedes floating punt kick to right half forward. Chance for O'Donnell. He kicks it quickly, which he normally does, Gary O'Donnell. And the ball bounces over for a throw in front of young Mark Rusciuto. 18 years of age. A big job for him. Picking up Darren Buick. 
And there's a big job for another youngster, Dustin Fletcher, picking up Tony Modra. They kept him to three goals at their only encounter this year, Rodo. He only, actually only had three kicks for the afternoon, Tony Modra. Ruck contest, Salmon and Pittman. Salmon after it again when it hits the ground. He can't control it. Now he tries to get it to James Hurd. Little kick, a mark again to McDermott. Plays on. And over the shoulder is the indication from the umpire. Yeah, it's taken high by Mark McCurry there. And... Darren Goldspink officiating down that end of the ground at the moment. High kick to half back. No mark taken. Now the uh, pressure on Olerenshaw. A free kick picked out of it again. It's going to Essendon to be taken by Rick Olerenshaw. He's at right half forward. He kicks in towards centre half forward. Looking for Salmon. Ball hits the ground. McCurry couldn't get a little toe poke to it. McDermott away. Bickley. And then Maynard, then Jarman, sweeping hand pass, good combination by the Crows. Rashudo's kick out into the path of Brown. The bounce favours that player. He's a left foot kick, forced to kick with the right foot. Not bad, up to half forward. Smart couldn't take the mark. Here's Mercedes, a very composed young man. Thompson's kick smothered. Kick off the ground by Brown. Goes loose to right half forward. Chance for Liptak. Picked up by Wanganin. Give it away to Wiedemann. Wiedemann in all sorts of trouble. Wanganin, quick clear. Hand pass is OK for Mercedes. And Joe Mercedes has a look downfield. The kick. Good play by Anna Renshaw. Now a chance for Kelford. He punches his way through. At centre half forward. Short kick. Is OK. Marks in front of Pittman. Yes, yeah, and some great shepherding behind the play here by the veteran Timmy Watson. He's already played in four grand finals, including two premierships. And Timmy will be wanting to win this one to get into his fifth grand final next week. Well, Salmon kicking from about 35 metres. Slight angle. We mentioned in the preview that uh, Paul Salmon is a fairly reliable kick. So let's see what he can do with this one. A goal each at the moment. Salmon shot for goal. Second goal of the bonus. A oh, delightful kick there by Paul Salmon. He did have uh, some kicking problems at this ground earlier in the year. Essendon by a goal. And Salmon with his first. It's 2-1 to one. Ola Renshaw, who's good play in the centre over Tregenza a moment ago. Set that goal up. Thompson's wobbly one. Rashido went with one hand. McDermott to Jarman. Left foot to centre wing. Wiedemann outnumbered. The Hill's getting back. Left hand handball to Thompson. Thompson from uh, centre wing again. Good looking kick. Plenty of distance. Salmon being held on to. Get back very well. Still Salmon misses. The players all around him. Did all the work and then missed. Yeah. I mean, you probably would have thought he would have kicked that. Stuart Whitney and Scott Lee on the interchange for the Adelaide Crows. Ben Hart playing his uh, first finals match. He and Hodges, the only two players out there who haven't experienced a finals match before. And named twice as, twice all Australian, Bruce. Not bad for a young 19-year-old player. Two out of two. Danger here for the Crows. Big danger. Long, normally constructed Buick. Normally a good kick off one leg. Misses. Let off. Buick missing. Good signs for Essendon after Liptak gold in the first minute. Scott Hodges, like Ben Hart, playing in his first AFL final, kicked six goals in the opening quarter for Port Adelaide last week. A different story here this afternoon, Bruce, playing in an AFL final, preliminary final. A lot more pressure than playing for Port Adelaide. Ben Hart gets distance this time. Ren the target, Pittman, Somerville at the back. Free kick going to Pittman. Somerville just getting his hand on his shoulder. They have gone for the two-pronged attack, Adelaide. Obviously worried about uh, Modra over the last couple of weeks, looking for Scotty Hodges to do a, his share of the goal kicking. Pittman, nice kick towards centre-half forward, no mark taken. In there is Masidi. Gets what you'd probably classify as an effective kick away. Had no one to give it to, went for the boundary line and did it well in the finish, Joe Masidi. Very good article in the uh, Herald Sun today about Joe Mercedi and Mark Mercury, written by Trevor Grant. Here's Nigel Smart. Now he's forced to kick with the left foot. High 
think the breeze may hold it in the field of play. It does. It's knocked over. And a boundary throw in the left forward pocket for Adelaide. Essendon 2-2, Adelaide one goal. Chance here for Adelaide. Smart doing the ruck work against Somerville. Chance again for Liptak. Smother affected by Thompson. In goes Liptak again. Can't get the ball clear. Caught with the football, Grenville. Couldn't really do much with it. And the umpire will bounce about 20 metres from the Crows' goal. They've got the first goal through Matthew Liptak. Essendon have replied. They've now kicked 2-2. Two -two. Salmon and Watson, the goal kickers for the Bombers. Two of their most experienced players. Big punch by Somerville. Goes over for a boundary throw-in, about 20 metres around. He's run pretty goal. well, Robbo, hasn't he, the last couple of weeks? My Actually, word. Uh, Peter Summerall, Much very good player, and uh, I think unfairly, Bernie. Very good job against Justin Madden, Madden in the qualifying final. Goes with Smart this time, Somerville. Missed her by Modra. McGuinness over the top. Grenville taps it out. Bickley. Jarman's got good hands normally. Lip tack to Brown. Left foot snap kick. A good one by Brown. A goal. A great goal. So the Crows bounce back. They cheer in Adelaide and they cheer here at the MCG. They're within two points. Yeah, well, it's a great effort whichever way you look at it for the Adelaide Crows. Third season in the competition. We'll have a look at this again in replay, but three years in the competition and already in the preliminary final. What a record that is. Good performance there by Jarman, Bernie. I think he that close... meant to get between the players' legs yeah. there with that little hand pass. At close quarters, there's none better than uh, Andrew Jarman. Ruck contest. Somerville will get the ball clear. He goes to Hills. That kick was smothered. Still at centre-half forward for Essendon. Little kick by Flood. Anderson. Now Tregenza for the Crows. Good kick too. Brown has a chance. This ball should sit. It does, but he's on his unfavoured side. Now he gets onto the left foot. Long kick to the goal front. Nearly a mark taken back there by Hodges. It's hurried over for a rush behind to Adelaide. There was a brilliant smother back at half back there by Mark Fisker. It set that uh, turnover up and uh, Adelaide nearly had the chance here with Brown 50 metres on his own. Fletcher, very short danger. The Brown tackle all right now. Wanganeen stops, props, handball, puts pressure on Grenville. G. Wooderman had him for a while. Play on call. Bickley in the pocket. Does he run out of play? Still in there. Here's Brown's already kicked one. Left foot snap. Another great goal. Well, wow, what a turnaround in two minutes. Young Browning with two goals in two minutes. Yes, well, Bruce, a couple of mistakes there by Essendon. First, uh, well, it wasn't a mistake because of that Fisker's tremendous smother at half-back setting up the this chance. One, this was terrible by Wangan. It was. It was actually actually, really the main problem there. I think Robbo was a kick from Fletcher. It wasn't really on. Yeah, initially, they initially were that kick pressure, was very they? poor and put them under all sorts of pressure. Now O'Donnell clears from the centre for Essendon. A high kick in towards full forward. Oh, yes. Good mark taken by Salmon. I uh, just noticed Robert behind play to Brian Wood, the Essendon runner, out having a chat to Joe Masidi, who uh, seems to have some injury problem, maybe the hamstring again. So that'll be a major blow to the Bombers if they lost him. Well, Salmon has the football about 30 metres out. He's already kicked one goal. But what a start by David Brown for Adelaide. He's kicked two. 19 plays 14, Adelaide lead. Salmon a chance to put the Bombers back in front. Certainly will get the distance. Good looking kick. Salmon's got his second goal. Two goals to Salmon, one goal to Watson. And Essendon lead by one point. Well, no problem there with the early season jitters with his goal kicking. And this is a very good mark on the lead against Salmon out in front. And uh, really, there's no one, no one in Australia can stop this man when he's on the lead because with his added height, 206 centimetres, and when he's at full reach, there's no hope of stopping him. There's Sean Wren to attack the football at the centre bounce up against Somerville. He gets the tap out. Taken by Long. Knocked on. Long a chance. Jarman into the path of Visca. Hand pass Wren. Off to McGuinness. McGuinness's kick. Wide. Mercedes leads in the race for the ball. Moving a little gingerly. And couldn't do much with the football there, Joe Mercedes. Maybe a little tentatively there, Robbo, do you think? We'll watch him closely over the next two or three minutes to see if he can 
Just shake off what we think may be a leg injury. Smart and Grenfell. Grenfell in the front spot. Wiedemann couldn't get the reflex handle. Should have given it away. Had a pro running past O'Donnell's free kick. Gary O'Donnell. Good tackle, yeah, wasn't it? Great he? tackle by Gary O'Donnell. It's in that uh, 1990 grand final when Collingwood won. You seem to run a long way over the mark there, Wiedemann. Unless he went back a, a long way. I think Robbo. Essendon, at quarter time, better hurry up so Shooty can get a bit of a chat to them. I think they're just a little bit, a little bit shell too shocked too confident. Early. No, just a little bit too confident. Smart and Grenvold again. Smart wins it. McGuinness with him. Denham will be his tag today. And again out of play. So Adelaide at 3-1. Essendon at 3-2. Halfway through this opening quarter. Preliminary final. Essendon's been in 25 grand finals. The Crows looking to get into their first. Jarman always looking to give it away. Might have been better off the kick. Long stages for a free kick and gets one. I'm with you, Bruce. Yeah, there wasn't a lot in it, was it? Bit uh, lucky to was get there, Robbo. Bit lucky. So Michael on from half back. Played a terrific game last week against West Coast. Kick probably not too bad in the finish. Anderson can't get clear. Maynard. Hand pass ineffective. Heard looking for Buick. Oh, being dumped. There was Kelthorpe. Kick off the ground. McDermott. Good combination there. The Crows got in to help out there. And it was Ben Hart who eventually got the possession. But McDermott and Visca both worked hard. Jarman. He's kicked towards the half oh. forward. Wunderman couldn't take the mark. Essendon fans appealing for the free kick. No. Look at this man. Nigel Smart. Handball over the top. Is it all right? Modra, unselfishly, Smart will get the goal. Brilliant football by Adelaide. It's all clear. It's a goal by Adelaide. Don't worry about that. But great football by four or five players. Great start to the game at the MCG in the preliminary final. We rejoin the game with 10 minutes to go to quarter time. The Crows have added two points and lead by seven. Well, the last time Anderson was here, well, in a grand final, was in the bomber colours. He had a poor day that day with a dislocated shoulder going off early. There's Anthony Danaher, one of the most famous families in footy, looking on his brother Chris out there today on the interchange. Free kick for Wren at half back. Sean Wren, been a terrific player for Adelaide. Got the football at right half back. Just a little undecided as to what to do with it. Then he kicks it in short. Well done by Pittman. He's run down from full back. Taken the mark just behind the wing and he's high kicking towards half forward. That's a mark. Wiedemann in front. Yes. Well done. Thompson attempting to go for the mark from behind. Didn't have the height. Wiedemann ducks one way, then the other. Pass looking for Modra. Fletcher. Well done by Modra. Emphasis on him doing a heck of a lot more work after he hasn't taken the mark. He's got the ball there and can't quite do enough with the footy. Bickley there, and we'll have a boundary throw in about 55 metres around from the Crows' goal. Well, you're, you're spot on there. Mark Micken in the crowd there looking on, but you're spot on with Modra. He must work a lot harder when the opposition has the ball. Opportunity for O'Donnell. Forced to kick quickly. Good pressure by the Crows' forwards. The ball rebounding. Michael Long. Ineffective kick. Hills. James Hurd gets the handball wide. Now the advantage could be with the Bombers. No, it's got to come back. Buick had it. He was in the clear. And he is not happy. The ball coming back to Paul Mills. Beautiful conditions here at the MCG. Clear blue sky after some torrential rain during the week. Oliver Inshaw. Handball wide for Long. Backs himself. There, Michael Long, and took the opposition on. Manton appreciating this scintillating football by Michael Long. Yes, and why wouldn't you, Robbo? Look at the explosive pace there shown by Michael Long. He just left about three Adelaide Crows players in, in his wake there as he dashed through centre-half forward. Kick from about 45 metres. It wobbled through, but got the desired result. 4-3-4-2, Trakenza back for Adelaide. Somerville's handled along again. Shrieks out of the centre. Chips at the salmon. Oh, 
great foot of him. That's why, Bruce, I'm a little bit worried about that matchup with Andrew Jarman picking up Michael Long because he really hasn't got the pace to go with him. Now, Michael Long, of course, as we know, one of the very, very best players playing in the game. But does it stop anybody else chasing him? I well, mean, just because he's an no, immediate no, that's opponent, true. there should be someone else there to have a go at him, shouldn't there? Well, that's right, Robbo, but you know how Michael Long plays. Once he gets that ball, he's cool. very elusive, and he's got such great dash and makes it very difficult for, for anyone to grab him. He goes right down the corridor, doesn't he? No boundary liner or boundary rider long. Now, Salmon's kicked uh, two. This is for his 450th in his career, but more importantly today, it's to give Essen in the lead. It's going to kick from 45 metres. Leans back, gives it a hook, not a good shot. So miss for Salmon, 2-2. Two -two. Kicked uh, four goals against Carlton, but copped a bit of criticism that night, and then four last week, very good against West Coast. So scores a level at the MCG. His four goals came in the first half, too, when they were setting it up. Hart short to McDermott. He's got Visca very wide. High ball. Pittman the target. Heard in front. Pittman at the back. Two grabs. Takes the mark. Swings around. Awkward looking kick to half forward. Wiedemann's in the box seat here. Tregenza with him. Thompson to go at Wiedemann. Still Wiedemann with him. Thompson well played. Wiedemann over the top to Tregenza. Tregenza short. Hodges on the lead. Stretches. Lip tack out of play. Lip tack. Gee whiz. He will... If he'd have grabbed that Bernie, he was nearly away, wasn't he? Yes, uh, would have been difficult from that situation. Michael Simons, who was, of course, admitted from this side. A little bit unlucky, Michael Simons. It was up between him and Derek Kicker, who played today. Well done by Bomber Thompson, taking the ball out of the air. His kick goes close to the boundary line, eventually over. In front of Ola Renshaw and James Kuzinza. Herdoff, uh, Robbo, interesting. James Herdoff, he's had hamstring problems. He's been replaced by Derek Kicker, the player I was just talking about. The Stormtrooper, Derek Kickett, boundary throw in, left half forward for Adelaide, Jarman in there with a chance, Grenvold pouncing on the football, and the last man to get up, Sean Denham, umpire will bounce, left half forward, about two kicks from Adelaide's goal, scores level, 4-3 apiece, Bickley, Tregenza, short kick by Tregenza, Wiedemann left it behind, Denham a chance, well done Anderson, committed himself, Gave it for McGuinness. McGuinness's kick out wide. Modra leads in the race. Can he get a touch early? He's given a couple of effective hand passes. This one could be a beauty for Liptak. And Liptak just misses to the right-hand side. One goal, two. Kick the first goal. Jamison with Mark Bicken in the crowd. David Flood to kick the ball back into play. Adelaide lead by that point. It was just kicked by Matthew Liptak. Flood goes to the far side of the ground. He's looking for Somerville. Anderson in front. Somerville does well. Wren dispossessed by Hills. In goes Liptak. Held didn't have the football. It spills for Bickley. Nearly the advantage. No, umpire Brian Sheen officiating there. The ball must go back. Yes, this is a free kick. Just held there. Knocked it out in front of him, Matthew Liptak. Clever play there. And he was grabbed by Paul Hills. Now, Liptak is probably close to 70 metres from goal. Played a great game, Robbo, against Hawthorne, Matthew Liptak. Good runner. In very, very good runner, Matthew Liptak. Short kick. Gives it to Anderson, who loves to thump the football long distances. Well, that was Hills was standing on the mark, and now this is his man they pass the ball to. Good kick. Excellent kick. And a magnificent mark taken by Tony Modra. Oh, that's what he must do, Robbo. The last couple of weeks, I think he's been staying back in the goal square far too much and not leading. This man is a devastating player when he leads. I'm of the belief that if you give him a chance, you've got to kick the ball properly to him. Yes. He'll lead for you. Oh, there's no doubt about that. That's marked there to Tony Modra. 158 marks for the season. Well, he's a chance to kick a goal from here. A definite chance. A brilliant kick as a goal. So, with four and a half minutes left in the first quarter, Tony Modra kicks his first goal. Adelaide get their fifth, and they lead by seven points. Yes, now, really, Tony Modra must keep doing this. He was able to get three or four metres there on Dustin Fletcher. 
unable to get the leap over the next line of players. Now, if he continues to do that all afternoon, he will be a very dangerous player. That goal there, kicked by Modra, now equals him with Gary Ablett at 124 goals. Adelaide by seven points in the preliminary final. Modra after a brilliant mark and goal. Thompson to Masiti. Out wide, Anderson has uh, been on top of Hills early. Hills who did the job on Matera last week, playing in his 50th game today, and out of play. Centre wing. Thomas slightly in attack. Wren won the tap. McDermott overran it. Watson's handball OK. Cowthorpe stopped and propped. Goes up to half forward. Buick with one hand, unable to. Maynard just punches it away in the direction of Hart. Watson's hip and shoulder good. And it's out of play at half forward. Essendon attacking. He's been throwing his weight around, Timmy, on the half forward line. A couple of very good hip and shoulders. A couple of very good uh, shepherds behind play there from Timmy also. Wren and Somerville. Somerville read it best. Ran into trouble. Got it back. Quick kick around the body by uh, McCurry. Bickley, nice mark. Good mark under pressure by Bickley. Been one of Adelaide's best players this year. Lovely kick. Gave Rusciuto every chance. This man, the youngest man on the field today, 18 years of age, great kick to Pittman. Has got Maynard running if he goes to him, he does. Wiedemann again. Oh, not a good handle by Maynard. Wiedemann was a bit proper anyway. Gave uh, Grimfold a little push. Long did well to Thompson. Thompson's quick kick to centre wing. Marked by Ola And good a good effort. one. Good effort. Yeah, the handball wasn't good there for Maynard because he was handballing to a stationary player in Wiedemann with his back to the play. Big chance for them, wasn't it? It was. Gone begging. Rashudo overruns the football. Buick, he might make him pay. He nearly went for the goal front. Smothered by Rashudo, picked off by McDermott, and a good kick. Vision excellent, finds Maynard. Short kick by that player, and the mark is taken by Bickley, held up by Ola Renshaw. 50 metres, must be forthcoming. Cut, umpire, you're stopping the player from playing on. Yeah, Bickley, centre wing, kicks it long, in towards the 50 metre line. It goes it back, lift tap. Run on, son. No, he couldn't quite control the football. Neither could Nigel Smart. Chance for Modra. Kick it. He does. And he gets another goal. Has he? Yes. Modra, two goals. And Adelaide playing well. 6-4. Lead Essendon, 4-3. Oh, this is something that uh, not many people would have expected here, but Adelaide playing fantastic football in his first term. You can see this in replay, the pace of lip pack, the pace of smart across half forward, worrying Essendon. They've brought Mark Bomber Thompson into the side. He's picking up Wayne Wiedemann. Now, Tony Modra moving around a lot better this week. On the move, he looks a terrific player. 125 goals now for the season. 6-4, 4-3, couple of minutes remaining. Somerville, Mercedes back to Somerville. Jarman on hands and knees. Good tackle put on Bickley. Essendon threw Denham out of the centre. Rashuto versus Buick. Wanganin, who's having a run up forward, still Wanganin. Wanganin in the pocket, tries to bring it back and kicks it behind. Wanganin, who played in the Premiership team at Port Adelaide at 17 years of age. Twice in the AFL team of the year, like Ben Hart, this man. Goes very short to McDermott, he's going to have to go back. Wait for the goal umpire to have completed his task. So the Bombers are 4-4, Adelaide are 6-4. It's been a stirring opening quarter. Terrific, Bruce, isn't it? Great footy at both ends of the field. Hart goes straight down the centre. Pittman and Rennie's dual target. Somerville did a good job. McGuinness breaks through beautifully to Tregenza with a bounce. A second bounce. Gets very close to the man. Long kick. Hodges sets himself and takes a beauty. A little bit of uh, hanging on there before the ball got there, Bruce. Oh, I thought Hodges grabbed Flood's jumper. And the umpire with that quick play transfer from one end of the ground to the other. Was 50 or 60 metres away from that incident. Gee, won't this be a handy lead? Another one. Well, there'd been about four changes of the lead until the scores had been level 4-3 apiece and then Adelaide kicked away and kicked the last three goals of the first quarter. We pick it up early in the second quarter. No addition to the score. Twice so, Bernie. Uh, Tregenza streaming into goal, straight to Fletcher. Lip tack streaming in, out on the full. Floods kick out towards half back. No mark taken. Denham's little hand pass for O'Donnell. In turn, Ola Renshaw gets onto the left foot. Short kick, okay. The mark taken by Masidi. Masidi on centre wing. Kick 
in towards kick it back up. No flow at the back was Ben Hart. Oh, brilliant mark, Robbo. Gets clear. Handball for Rashudo. His kick in towards the centre. The big man, Sean Wren, onto the right foot. He's kicked too high. Paul Hill drops what he should have taken. Brown. Nigel Smart runs inside 50. And I think he may have kicked the goal. He has. Second goal to Smart. And a very important first goal of the second quarter to Adelaide. Not they lead 8 4 to 4 5. Not only Robbo did he drop that mark, Paul Hills, but uh, he's in a bit of injury trouble here. It looks as if he may be coming off the ground in fact yes he is Paul Hills as we see this in replay there he is and I have just taken his eye off the ball at the last moment worried about the players in front of him and that turnover again a few very costly turnovers here Hills off the ground replaced by Chris Danaher margin out to 23 points Visca loose in defense for Adelaide as Danaher's on big moment here for Essendon 8-4-4-5, Somerville goes early. Danaher tries to crash through. Jarman breaks a tackle. Left foot pass to Modra. Magnificent! Yeah, That's very classic. like Fletcher. That'll be 50 metres against Fletcher also. I'll talk about the classical stuff from Jarman. As good that as you'd ever see. You'd never see a better kick than that. No, Only well, by his brother. Great skills. Great skills, both of these Jarman boys. And that's Fletcher with the 50 metres for uh, dropping the knees into Modra. He's about to go back and kick his third and put Adelaide five in front. Have Three to one on they were, isn't it? Four to one on, weren't they, this morning? Have you had a couple of Bob on the Crows, Bruce? Haven't had a bet, Robbo. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't mind the odds now, would you? Modra from the goal square. Straight through. Nine goals, four to four, five. Oh, what, a, uh, what an upset this. Essendon last week looked like premierships, and in fact, they were almost premiership favourites after their win last week against the West Coast Eagles. Oh, Adelaide, aren't they good? There's that pass there from uh, Jarman, and sliding over the top with the knees there was Fletcher, which guaranteed a goal to the Adelaide Crows. Bernie, I think in a situation like this, you can fall into criticising the team that are getting beaten instead of giving promotion to the Adelaide Crows. Oh, look, I don't they think just played brilliant football. Oh, they have. Well, I wouldn't take anything away from the Crows. They've had it all over Essendon. Well, the bounce in the centre, 9-4 to 4-5. Wren now starting to get on top at the centre bounces. Mercury couldn't pick up the ball. Tregenza did and kicked it forward. Bounces freely. Fletcher under pressure. Couldn't control the football. Still there. Now a chance for David Flood. He's going to get a free kick. He's between fullback and centre halfback. So the Bombers with the job in front of them. Short kick. Ooh, a bit risky. Very Masi risky. takes the mark. They trail 4 5 to 9 4. The goal kickers. Modras kick three. Smart and Brown have kicked two each and four. Essendon Salmon has kicked two. Big punch by Ben Hart, playing very well. Wiedemann on to McGuinness. McGuinness looks to the goal square. Mogul! Ooh, he went high but couldn't hang on to it. And it goes through for a behind to Adelaide. And Paul Hills came off the ground just a few minutes ago. Don Scott. Yes, well, he doesn't look too good, Ian. Although he did run, run off the ground, he was brimacing when the doctor was examining his knee. Now they've put ice on it, so I don't know as to whether he's going to come back on, uh, but he looks as if he could. Wren, now uh, smart. You're backing from here. Hits the post. Well, we said he was a key, uh, Bruno. Yes, he is. as much as Michael got more. He is absolutely creating havoc across half forward. Grenvold with his hands full this afternoon. Maybe just lacking the inches and the mobility to go with uh, Nigel Smart. Flood to bring her back in. So Smart twice, an AFL Team of the Year member. Like Ben Hart, and McGuinness has been four times. Adelaide had five in the 20. Flood's kick. Mark taken by Ola Renshaw. Back to McCurry. McCurry from half back to centre wing. Wanganeen up forward now. Takes a sliding mark in front of Maynard. Looking for an option. Goes to half forward. Heard back on the ground. Visca at the back. Wren threw it away in the end. Watson caught over the top. Visca has hold of him. It'll be a bounce down. Essendon inside 50. They trail 4 5 to 9 6. Well done by young Mark Visca there to hold Timmy Watson up. Effect a good tackle. Ball up about 45 metres from the Essendon goal. Wren, Bickley, high, back near the centre. 
Michael Long's a chance. Away for some of it, brilliantly smothered by Kriginza. But it rebounds for O'Donnell. Ola has gone. McGuinness has got him. Look at that. Look at the numbers. One. Beautiful stuff. Graham Corns would be right with that. Yes, first of all, that smother by Tregenza, then getting the numbers at the ball there. Three or four cross players to the one Essendon player. Andrew Jarman, the recipient of the free kick. He's kicked towards the forward pocket area. No free kick. Here's a chance. Brown, across his body, nearly performs a miracle. But registers just one behind. It's a real hush has come over the ground here at the moment. I think people well, are in disbelief. Certainly. Well, the majority of the supporters here would be Essendon, I would think. No doubt about that. Well, that's why it's hush, because they trail by about five goals. Masudi swings it out wide to Fletcher. You've played with such spirit this year, you just don't reckon they'll be lying down here. Essendon, smart over the top, Tregenza's handball to Wren. Wren inside, puts some pressure. Rashudo got a high tackle, he'll get a free kick. The 18-year-old from the heart of the centre square. And Timmy might have got one also there with uh, Rashudo's arms flailing about. 9-7-4-5, Rusciuto, Modra the target, uh, Hodges at the back, still Hodges, kept it in very well, and just misses a behind, so Hodges providing a little bit, he's kicked one, and Modra's got three, there's Hills trying to get himself right again, as uh, Don said he had some ice on his knee a moment ago, and he's on the interchange, heard back on, Flood to bring it in, Adelaide dominating, 9-8-4-5. Yes, and it'd be a long time since Essendon have kicked a goal, I would think. 20-minute mark of the first quarter. There's a mark taken by Pittman outside 50 metres to give the Crows another chance. Looks like Salmon may be on the ball at the moment, Robbo. Pittman right up from fullback, taking that mark, followed Salmon up there. Looks for Modra. Oh, that was too easy. Too easy. That was just too easy. I think Dustin Fletcher now... Just looking as though he's down in a bit of confidence. The champion full forward from Adelaide has kicked three goals. So this for his fourth goal. He's had a fantastic season. Kicking from 35 metres directly in front. And it's another Adelaide goal. Modra, four goals. Adelaide 10-8, Essendon 4-5. Buick tried one off the ground, Adelaide getting it out of the centre square in this term. Bickley over the top, can't quite get free. Liptak tries to break a tackle. And again it'll be a bounce down in the centre. Just feel now, Bernie, that Essendon have got to make its move as Tim Watson's gone to the back line on Hodges. Well, yeah, it's desperation time at the moment for the Bombers. They're really being uh, given a football lesson by the Crows. Here's McDermott from the centre square. High ball. Smart caught underneath and Modra goes hard for it. Bouncing ball. Smart's normally very good. Got held on to. Tries to break a tackle. Handball went nowhere. Off the ground O'Donnell. Danaher after it. Hodges not moving too quickly. And out of play. Yes, yeah, Michael Long now being picked up by Mark Bickley. And Andrew Jarman picking up Darren Buick. And look at that in the uh, centre breaks. Four to Adelaide, nil to Essendon in this second quarter. Salmon straight to Anderson. Anderson's left foot shot misses. Oh, hits the post. Good call, wasn't it? Wasn't it, Bruce? I was oh, watching yeah. the flight of the ball and I thought, this yeah. is a bit early. Yeah, it came back on the breeze, didn't it? That one from Anderson. Remember the big mare, Empire Row? She still hung on and won. Oh, <laughs> you're a legend. Two posters also for the term for Adelaide. One from nine. Nigel Smart and one from Greg Anderson. 10 9 4 5, long the target, gets him at centre half back. Well, listen, we just have had trouble getting past the centre. This quarter is now over 10 minutes old, and I would suggest they've probably only been up there once or twice. Long hand pass. Thompson on the edge of the square. Short pass is all right. And Kickett made it good. In the finish, an excellent chess mark. Derek Kickett. Loves to bomb away from this distance. Well, if they ever need him to do something, they need to hear this afternoon because the ball is in enormous strife. Kick it from 50 metres. Good kick to the front of the square. And an excellent mark taken by the Ruckman, Sean Wren, getting back in defence for Adelaide. Looking to give the hand pass away, but I'm sure in the finish he'll kick it. 
short. Mark taken by Rashudo, who's played well. A long kick by that player, out to the wing. Visca, another youngster, takes the mark in front of Wanganu, looking to play on. Eventually does so. Centre half forward, no mark taken. Out comes Thompson. Got to do something to lift the side. Flood, Masidi, O'Donnell. Short kick, OK. Kick has got it again. They've just got to get a goal, Essendon. They've got no momentum whatsoever. Hasn't kicked a goal for a month, Derek Kicker. His last goals were eight against Footscray here four weeks ago. Well, they had a chance just a minute ago to kick one. Couldn't do it. This one looks pretty good. It's an Essendon goal. Well, Bernie, it was a long time between drinks. I think we set the 20-minute mark of the first quarter. And now it's probably halfway through the second term, they get their fifth goal. Yeah, that's right, Robert. Well, that, in fact, is their first goal for the term, the Bombers. And actually, the first time that they've had a bit of free play through the middle of the ground there, they've got some run there, ending up with O'Donnell. Very good short pass, hitting kick it, kick it on the chest. And there we see, just coming back with a bruise there, that kick from Derry Kickett. Wiedemann off for Adelaide. It's a long way to go for the Bombers, but they've uh, kicked a goal. Adelaide had eight scoring shots in this turn before Essendon scored. A goal to kick it. Their first in nearly half an hour of football. Danaher over the top. Or Jarman quite brilliantly to Bickley, to Modra. Great football. Jarman's hands in the centre there were exquisite. Gave Bickley the opportunity and Modra... Well, it's also, I think, Bruce, a very good move with Hodges in that forward pocket because Essendon have got more than one player to worry about. They've got Hodges to worry about. They've got Modra to worry about. And Modra really giving Fletcher a, a bit of a football lesson here this afternoon. We started the season, Modra, with 10 goals on this very ground on a Sunday afternoon against Richmond. He's gone on to become a legend in Adelaide. And that time, he's let himself down by missing. He never looked comfortable, did he? No, you can see the concern on his face. I'm sure these blustery conditions cause problems for the players shooting for goal. What, what about, about that, though, Robbo? Seven shots to one in this second quarter. More than that. Yeah, it's 10, 10 to 5, 5, 2. Double the score, 20 shots to 10. And Salmon doing the ruck work. He's got the possession. Away for Denham, but the kick was smothered. Brown, tackle. McGuinness a chance. Chopped off now by Mercury. Long, Buick. Buick, run. Gets rid of it. Kick it, you've got to go. Ben Hart did. Punched it away. Underneath all that is Maynard. Kick it, tries to get it clear. James Hurd has the footy, but umpire Goldspink wouldn't like to bounce it. I'll tell you what impressed me in that passage of play was the chase from Nigel Smart on Darren Buick. Good to see Nigel Smart, the centre-half forward, applying that much pressure. Good point. Kick it. Can't get clear. The umpire will have to bounce it once again. 78 kicks to Adelaide, 65 to Essendon, 45 handballs to 43, 28 marks to 19, three kicks, eight to seven. Wren gets the tap, Rusciuto snared beautifully though by Flood, snap not good, under pressure out on the fall. Wiedemann back on for the Crows, Scott Lee off. And Scott Lee's been on for about four minutes, hasn't he? Twice. Three minutes the first time and one the second, replacing Tregenza early on. His main art. Oh, look at this. Got a paddock rent. Can go for a stroll. And that's what he's about to do. Then goes with a long kick. McCurry should take it. He does. Not a good kick by Wren. Had the distance, but uh, getting underneath it was lip tack. McCurry in short. Sam in the target. Essendon just starting to hold on here now. Get a feeling they might be about to make a move. Salmon's kicked the half forward. Flood out wide. McDermott with him. Started on Watson today. Flood goes back. Here's Masidi, got around McGuinness very easily. Denham, Denham inside 50. Little drop punt to the front of the square. Hart, Wanganin, Hart. Bit of skill between those two AFL Team of the Year members and over the line for a behind. So Essendon crawl up to 5-6, Adelaide at 10-10. Well, I'm sure in the 11 minutes left, uh, Essendon will not need Adelaide to kick any more goals and they've got to get uh, another two or three themselves. McDermott has the football in the left back pocket now decides to go long and kicks it high out near the wing good mark Pittman off to McGuinness McGuinness loves to run with the footy but he gives it away creating Wiedemann short kick too short knocked away by Chris Danaher back for Wiedemann he's approaching 50 metres 
He kicks it long, very long, but wide. Out of bounds on the full Essendon free kick. He let himself down there, I think, Wiedemann with that first pass because he passed to a player who was completely covered and the pass was only 15 metres anyway, Robbo. The long kick there would have been much more advantageous. Watson with the football in the right back pocket. High, near half back, good mark taken by Salmon over Wren. Handball for James Hurd. His kick, looking for Flood, does well, then falls over, gets it back. Three Adelaide players right onto him, and you're gone because you had one chance and you did not get rid of it. McDermott has the footy now. James Hurd loose in defence at the moment for Essendon, so Sheedy ringing the changes. McDermott's kick up towards the 50 metre square. Smart was uh, outnumbered. Jarman snared it beautifully. Over to McGuinness inside 50. Danger. McGuinness goes to the goal square. Watson underneath takes the mark. Sweeps a long handle. Good play. Watson to O'Donnell. To Long. Long not take May not on here. Stops, waits, then runs laterally, then goes short again, looks for Wanganeen, try to half volley. Visca pressures him, pushes him in the back free kick to Wanganeen. That's set a win. Next goal important because Adelaide's had a lot of chances and they haven't quite destroyed Essendon yet. Well played, Wren. O'Donnell snared him. Goes short with a chip one. Ooh, probably should have done better, Bickley. Buick will kick a goal. Go and does. Not out of this by a long shot. Just had the feeling, Bernie, that a couple of wasted Adelaide chances will give the Bombers a sniff. Yeah, they're still a long way behind, though, Bruce. The momentum really has been all Adelaide in this second quarter. Essendon uh, must do a lot better than they have done. The runners of Adelaide really worrying this Essendon side at the moment. Good kick by O'Donnell in. It was. It was uh, said to be a perfect, wasn't it, Robert? Well, I word it was. <laughs> to right steal a committeeism. <laughs> committeeism, that's right. <laughs> Here they go again, and have a guess who's going to start it. Long from the centre. Kick across the half forward line. Kick it, can't take the mark. Two players on him, so one is oh, oh, the They had been a bit of a blue on there between, I think it was Visca and Wanganeen. Just as that ball was bounced after that last goal had been kicked by Essendon. And that may have just carried over from that little incident, I think, Robbo, because that was completely unnecessary there from Mark Rusciuto. So Wanganeen with the football. He would really have to do his absolute best here, I would think, to score a goal. Gavin Wanganeen. A high kick in towards the goal square. Mark taken by Wren. Handball McDermott. Long handball. Get rid of it quick, Simon. He does. Off to McGuinness. McGuinness wide. Jarman. Good kick. Sets it up. Jarman to carry the football along the outer wing. The left foot kick by that player. Good penetration. At the back. Another sensational mark for Modra. Modra at his best today, Robbo. He's had his critics the last couple of weeks. And the fans in that line. Gee. They're ecstatic, aren't Pretty they? But Tony Modra, he's really turned it on here this afternoon into the MCG. Over the top again. Oh, superb in the air, Tony Modra. Difficult shot. Close to the boundary line, he kicks. Oh, it's pretty good, it's a goal! Well, it was a shock to all Essendon fans and I suppose all fans of football in Victoria what was happening to the Bombers out there at the MCG this afternoon. Not quite the end of the first half. There was one fantastic highlight still to come before the siren and it was a mark by young ruckman Sean Wren of the Crows. Have a look at this. But competitive. He's kicked to about 30 metres. Oh, Wren! Yeah! 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 For a fan play, Sean Wren. Look at that. What a mark. That's what you come to the footy for, isn't it? See stuff like that. Well, yeah, Scott Hodge is just, just doing the body-on-body -body stuff with Paul Salmon. Mark of the day or mark of the season? Well, Greg Anderson kicked a goal right on the siren at half-time and look at that scoreline. It was 12-12-84 to the Bombers 6-6-42. A 42-point lead to the Crows. Remember at half-time way back in 1970 in a grand final, the margin was 44 points and still the team behind Carlton came back to win. But, gee, the, the, the Crows... 
looked fantastic with uh, probably their scoring opportunities in the second quarter costing them dearly. We pick it up at the start of the third quarter. Second half about to start. The most remarkable opening half with Adelaide leading 12-12 to 6-6. It's a seven goal margin at half time. A place in the grand final for one of these two teams. Somerville wins the tap uncontested. Masidi playing up forward runs at it. Maynard with him. Brown who kicked two goals in the opening term. Maynard under pressure. Just dropped it on the ground. Long gets through. Masidi who looked to be in trouble in the first half. Got it to Ola Winshaw. He's got time to steady. Chips it to Salmon. Free oh, kick surely. Free kick to Salmon. Well, the general consensus at half-time, Bruce, was that uh, they couldn't get back into this game, Essendon. If they do kick a couple of early ones here, maybe they're not out of this contest. Here it is very early. Pittman over the top, interfering with Salmon. The umpire was about five metres away, had a very good look at that one. Two goals, two for Salmon. We just mentioned there that Michael Long was very slow to regain his footing. And uh, he was the player that got the ball out of the centre. Terrific handball from in under. Well, what a big kick this is. Two, three to seven. Well, you wouldn't believe it, would you? From 25 to 30 metres out. Six, seven to 12, 12. The Bombers need everyone they can get. Yes, that was really the most important shot he's had too, Bruce, because this second half, and this particularly early in this third quarter, they need to kick a couple of early ones to give them any sort of chance to get back into the match. Hart's kick in, punched away by Somerville, ball rebounds, nearly a tap on by Denham was effective, O'Donnell snapshot for goal, goes close to the square, Buick, no, rushed through for another behind Essendon. So what Adelaide started with in the first quarter, Essendon certainly need in the third quarter. Hills and Hurd on the bench, and Ben Hart to kick it back into play once again. 6-8 to 12-12. Comes to the member's side. The ball floating in the breeze. Punched away by Long from Jarman. Rebounds for Watson. Handball brilliantly. Denham, unselfish. Buick will get it now. Well, goes. Darren Buick kicks his second goal. And it certainly was coming. The Bombers surging forward. And they get their seventh goal. Well, that goal really coming from a very poor kick out there from Ben Hart. Giving the chance there for Michael Long to tap that ball in the corridor area. Good little hand pass there from Sean Denham to the goal kicker in Buick. And a poor kick out from that full back from uh, Ben Hart off the outside of the boot. And kept it in that centre corridor area, setting that chance up for the Bombers. Bombers fans lifting. 7-8 to 12-12. They've had three scoring shots in the second half. Somerville again, lying out of the centre. Away with a bounce. Chips it, Salmon the target. Well played by Visca to fill the hole. Salmon charging out. Indirect though, Bruce, there mm. from Michael Long. I agree, Bernie. Well, not the best option there. Well, I guess if Salmon leads there. Well, just ignore it because they must go for the goal face. Visca wide, Maynard was his target. Here's Anderson, had a very good first half. Capped it off with a goal, not a good kick. Blind round the body straight to Thompson. The big possession getter for Essendon in the opening half. Chips it in, but again, not good footy. Wren takes it, gives it off to McGuinness. McGuinness's poor kick into the centre. Smart got an awkward bounce on the hard turf. Smart has got terrific pace. Away from Grenfell. Grenfell pressures him, pushes him out. Handled by Wanganin. Ola Renshaw tries to break Tregenza. Back to Wanganin. A fit of the fumbles out of play. Yes, I think Nigel Smart at centre half forward, just a little bit too good for David, David Grenvold with his pace and mobility, and causing Grenvold all sorts of problems. Boundary throw in left half forward for Adelaide. Grenvold Dropped with the it. football, he's and he's going to get kick. a free kick. Well, obviously the umpire saw something that... Uh, too high, Robbo indicated. An infringement. Grenvold's kick in towards the centre. Watson's third in line. Jarman in front. Either took the mark or was awarded a free kick. Handball away for McDermott. Essendon have got to stand up here. McDermott's kick. Oh, went straight through Whitney. Modra off the ground. Ball bounces close to the line. Back goes Fletcher. Keeps it in. Centimetres in it. And that's all it was. The boundary umpire was only 15 metres from that little incident. 
and he signals out of bounds. Chris Danaher, tackled by Smart, ball spills for lip tack, handball Anderson, loves to kick goals, Greg Anderson, he's kicked to the front of the goal square, Modra couldn't take the mark, flood away to Wanganin, Wanganin handles it in front of himself, by gee that was close. Good pressure there by Modra. Kick off the ground, goes wide to the wing, Rusciuto, well done. Too far for Andrew Jarman, but by Jill's was good vision and nearly a good kick by Mark Rusciuto. Well, he held back initially, Robbo. He's going to kick on the left boot, then uh, change to the right boot. Andrew Jarman showing his displeasure there with that kick from Rusciuto. Boundary throw in, left forward pocket for Adelaide. Somerville. Oh, oh gee, that, that was, was tough stuff. That was Bickley. Terrific stuff by Bickley. Hey, there's no doubt in his courage, Robbo. No. He's, and he's uh, been an integral part of this team since coming into it. Yeah, undoubtedly. He's only had 11 possessions today, but uh, he's been a very, very good Adelaide Crows player. Smart and Somerville. And uh, out of play. 12-12, 7-8. Essendon with the early goal in the second half. Mark Bickley now playing on uh, Michael Long. Andrew Jarman, and Gary O'Donnell playing on each other. Somerville. Ola Renshaw and Grenville. Grenville gets away. Tregenza to put the pressure on. Grenville from half back. Kick it as Hart went to ground. Kick it, can't keep it in, out of play. Goal in that uh, second quarter. Stopped the Watt for Essen. And Adelaide had kicked six straight goals to that point. And the Bombers still chasing hard and trailing by a long way. 34 point margin. Wren and kick it. Jarman. Couldn't get the handball through. Watson gets in over the top with Kickett. And the Bombers able to hold it up. The Jarman looked like he may have an effective touch. And again, it'll be a bounce. Wren, hands on his hips. Goes with Watson and Kickett. Wren, well done. McDermott's got a bit of time. Centering kick, not good. Danaher got underneath it. Oh, made a meal of it. Brown away with a bounce. On the lead, Wigney should get him. Wigney couldn't hold it. Thompson under pressure. Handball to Denneher. Squeeze has won to Mercedes. Good feel, Mercedes. To Denham. To Mercedes again. Well played, Bombers. Ola Renshaw. Still Ola Renshaw. It's a better build up with Tegenza able to smother. Runs on to Tegenza. Ola Renshaw comes back. It's a contest. It's good footy. Wanganin gives it away. Liptak over the top. Bickley over the top. Liptak gets it out. Good umpire. McGuinness went without it. Spin it before he got it. Grenvold out to Ola Renshaw. Ola Renshaw squeezes it. Watson onto it. Takes it with courage. Held up. Maynard to Tregenza. Great foot. He should kick it to Smart. He does. Could be a free kick to Wanganin out of course. He was held there by Liptak. Well done, Bill. Kick him out of the contest. Well spotted by the umpire. Yeah. And this could be critical because the Bombers have got the players out on that far side of the ground. Thompson took it from Michael Long. That kick was ordinary. Mercury interferes. Yes, Mark. You've given away the free kick. Nothing across half forward this afternoon for the Bombers, Robbo. Ordinary kick by Visca, but Ben Hart had plenty of time. His kick in short, chopped off by Denham. Ball spills for Liptak. He can't control it. Comes to Michael Long. One bounce. Goes long, looks for Salmon. Getting back was Wren. Still a contest. Salmon, Buick, can't take it. Little touch by Pittman was important. Mercury, close to the boundary line. Mercury does well. Handball, Salmon, get the goal. And he's got his third. This game's alive now. 12 12 8 8. Wren goes early. Centre square's important. Long again. Third time in the quarter. He's turning this game around. Goes for Salmon. McDermott cuts him off. Goes wide. Bickley's got a paddock if it sits. It's a big play here. Brown running for him. Oh, smart. He really should have gone for Brown, I thought. Modra. 
Brown, handball over the top, Reedham and attacks hard. Tries to get rid of Grenville, well played by Grenville. Thompson, who is excellent, beautiful Thompson. Wonderful stuff to Denham. Now, Denham again through the centre. Essendon mounting its challenge. Salmon sets himself. Rusciuto made probably an error there. Could have probably marked. Handball to Visca. To McDermott. Now Jarman gets it back to Rusciuto. His hand pass finds Wiedemann. Wiedemann in the centre of the ground. A good kick out in front, which is where the forward always likes it. And Whitney marks in front of his face. That was a better finish there by the Weed. A great kick by Wiedemann. Whitney short kick. Chopped off by the end of the end. A little bit too low and a bit too short there from Whitney. Oh, no. You've got to get it, Dustin. The contest with Whitney. He gets the hand pass away. Adelaide may get a goal. When it looked as though Essendon were going to surge down the ground. The kick to the goal front. No mark taken. In trouble, Liptak. Still in trouble. Now a possession for Ring. No, Liptak still got a chance. Down he goes from Greenville. Nigel Smart. What can he manufacture? Nothing. Mark Thompson kept it in that side brilliantly. Gets the ball out. Kelthorpe has it. Runs outside 50. Gets back onto the favoured right side. Handball over the top. The Bombers are handballing at all cost. It's O'Donnell through the centre of the ground. His kick is effective. It's back by Watson. The Bomber fans have got something to cheer about. Goes short. Tregenza didn't quite cut it off. Really should have. Ola Renshaw. Tregenza. Still Ola Renshaw. Boundary line looming out of play. The well, ordinary kick wasn't it from Timmy there. Evan Wanganeen, a little bit of strife behind play. The trainer's been having a look at him. Gee, isn't the bomber Thompson playing a quarter of footy, the captain? Fantastic. Can sense something here with Essendon coming back. Buick looks for free and he'll get it. Rashido hanging on over the top of him. And this is the best finisher in Essendon's team. You couldn't think of anyone better to have the footy. It's kicked two already. And two great goals last week also from Buick. You see the replay, the free kick awarded against Rusciuto, and uh, he might be in a nomination for the Oscars, do you think? Oh, he made it look pretty <laughs> obvious, didn't he, in the finish? Well, it doesn't hurt to throw the arms out occasionally, let the umpire no. see what's happening. Well, especially when you're only 20 metres from goal. Buick going for his third, drop punt, he's got it. <laughs> They're coming home here, the Bombers, charging back into this preliminary final. They've had five scoring shots to Zilch. That's it, just going to say, Bruce, I don't just haven't scored in this quarter yet. No, well, there's no doubting the character of this Essendon side, Robbo. I don't think we would ever doubt that. we we'll see that free kick again, the ward against Rusciuto. Uh, 48 goals now for the season for Darren Buick. They have got some variety up on that forward line. Buick, two fabulous goals last week. So it's back to 24 points now, the difference. Can Adelaide get a score? Tregenza kicks across his body. Half forward, it bounces off Lip Tack's legs. Denham can get the hand pass clear for O'Donnell. Now Chris Danaher onto the right foot, kicks it high. In towards centre half forward, Somerville can't mark. Oh, taken down was Bickley. Long's got McDermott. No free kick. Still a chance. Ola Renshaw, O'Donnell gone. Ola Renshaw away for Denham. Denham quickly, good spotting. Masini in trouble. Maynard over the top. Masidi gets the free kick. Yeah, too high against Maynard. Jumping Joe Masidi from that oh. western suburb Keeler. Poor kick. Maynard's handball finds McGuinness. McGuinness runs through the very, very hard centre wicket area. A long kick inside 50 metres. The ball goes to the back. Chance here for Flood. He gets past some very, very ordinary minding. And Thompson from 50 metres kicks it into the centre. Denham having some sort of an impact. On the far side, Ola Renshaw, but he goes for the right-hand side where Thompson was forced to kick with his right foot. Probably not a good option. Terrific shepherd by Somerville, doesn't come off. O'Donnell beaten for it by McDermott. Then Wren, now Wiedemann. Jarman slips over. Handball OK. Tregenza backs himself, forced to kick with the left. Inside 50 metres, coming out and taking a nearly a great back, but the recovery was enormous. Fletcher and Wanganin combined. Ola Renshaw's got the foot in running through the centre of the ground. Streaming away with a fourth bounce. Wanganin's turning lip tack inside out in this turn. Taken by Carthorpe. McDuel will go. Goes for it. Six points. That's it. Those young blokes are getting into it now, aren't they? 
Well, Wanganeen is just dominating he's across the play there. He's got to play there, doesn't he? That's where he plays his best footy. And suddenly, this game has turned around completely. Well, well it's Fletcher it's, too. It's hard if, to believe, isn't it, how it's turned around so quickly. They were in all sorts of strife, yeah. And that other option, if they had have gone the other way when you called it before, out to Ola Renshaw, instead of coming this side of the ground to Thompson, they had it set up again to take him to the forward line. Complete domination by Essendon at the start of this third quarter. And tell you what, they'll take some stopping. We've seen them this year with the spirit up. And when they're on a roll, they'll take some stopping here. Wasn't there a cheer then? And that goal was scored. 12, 12, 10, 8. The Bombers charging at the Crows, who desperately need a goal against the flow. O'Donnell, long again. Fourth time out of the centre in this term. Jarman, well played. Maynard, Wiedemann, short. Somebody on the end of it. Wigney gets there, fills the spot. And arguably goes back for the most important kick of the day for the Crows. Yeah, not much doubt about that, Bruce, because if they kick this one, they've got quite a handy advantage again. I don't want to lose momentum here, the Crows, because uh, things really haven't gone their way as we see David Brown taken from the ground, replaced by Scotty Lee. And Wigney having a shot at goal. He started on the interchange and has replaced Scott Hodges. Will kick from 45 metres out, drop punt. It's close. I think he might get it. It's a goal. A big kick. An important one. And so Adelaide at 13-12 to 10-8. all that many posies but he's so efficient Bickley gets the Adelaide Crows up towards half forward tapped on by Smart no one home Chris Danaher will clear for Essendon he has a good look upfield a wobbly punt kick out in front of Watson Watson makes a contest does well then gets the handball away Ola Renshaw's had a few possessions in the last five minutes he tries to go for the thumping kick up into the forward line it bounces awkwardly Scott Lee Buick gets there just a little late Ben Hart can't control the footy. Well, Ryan Shaw could have spotted Sean Denham there, too, in the middle. Had about 20 metres on his opponent. He's changing the set of breaks there, Bernie. We have turned around this quarter. 7-1 to one in that second term. 5-1 to one in Essendon's favour in this quarter. Well done by Salmon, but his kick falls short. And it's marked by the opposite number there. Number 52, Sean Wren. Kick across the back line. Visca goes short. Anderson will mark. He's between half-back and centre wing. Gets onto the left foot, and he's kicking towards the centre. Good mark taken by Wiedemann. You can go to German, Robbo. In short. Too far. Ola Renshaw marks. Now, that is a very, very important break down there. German was in the clear, and that kick... Very, very inaccurate. Ola Renshaw, move it quickly. He kicks it in towards half-forward. And that's a mark, a good one. O'Donnell stood his ground. Watson takes the handball. Kicks in long. Buick? No. In trouble underneath all of that was Mark Rusciuto. And the umpire will call for bounce. Mark Rusciuto and Darren Buick. And a little to do there as the umpire will bounce. Wiedemann coming off the ground, maybe that last kick. And Graham Cole's not too happy about that. And David Brown back on for the Crows. Maynard from Wren to Tregenza to McGuinness. Good teamwork from Adelaide. McGuinness trying to keep it in play. It was a good kick in the end because he's under great pressure. And Thompson thumps it over the line. Well, what a big 10 minutes coming up. They call it the Premiership quarter. Essendon played like that for 15 minutes. Adelaide's held firm now, kicked the last goal, and still has a handy break. Can the Bombers erode this lead further? Denham's quick kick. Bird takes the mark. And three games in 12 weeks hurt and he's been out of sorts today salmon provides the lead that's the way he goes he sets himself the big fish goes only with one hand Rusciuto mops up no one ready to kick it to probably should have held onto it a bit longer wants the boundary line wants it badly it's running it's rolling and it finds it out of place center wing and mark Rusciuto said earlier youngest player out here at 18 years of age Played 19 straight games for the Crows. Well done by Calthorpe. The push it forward to O'Donnell is having a good turn. O'Donnell centering kick. Heard gets set. Hard at the back. Buick tried to read it off the back. Salmon gets down. Cleverly, really, but was it a scoop? It was. So it's against him. 
And McDermott's free kick from centre-half back. Look to play on, but the umpire is asking Chris McDermott to go back. And, uh, well, actually, he's going to give it to Pittman, who eventually handballed away to McDermott. McDermott from right half back, kicks it out near the wing. Marking contest. Thompson very, very close there to Scott Lee. And the ball goes over for Bambi throw in centre wing. Adelaide 13, 12, 90 lead Essendon 10, 8, 68. So 22 points is the advantage. Essendon wouldn't want it to uh, be stretched any further than that. And they would love to get a goal or two in the remaining seven and three quarter minutes. Michael Long kicked towards full forward. Punched away by Rusciuto, but Essendon have got the numbers. Watson overrun it, left it behind like a duck's head. Oh, great smother there by Long. Watson still a chance, got the footy underneath. Can't get clear, Pickman's little tap for Tregenza. Chopped off by Masidi. Left foot kick to the front of the goals, punched away. Goes back to half forward, Ola Renshaw in trouble. Gets the handball away, gives away a bit of ground. Denham and Kelthorpe combine. What can David Kelthorpe do? Give another hand pass away. Bomber Thompson, no one there. McGuinness in trouble. Now Adelaide hold it up. And a critical one at that, 50 metres from the Essendon goal. A couple of times they looked a little dangerous. But Adelaide have been able to play very tight football across half back. Great pressure, wasn't it, Robbo, by the Adelaide defence? Essendon had possession, but they really couldn't do anything with it. Some of it, but it's punched away by McGuinness. Scott Lee in a little bit of trouble, but does well. Gets the handball away to Visca. Visca up towards Smart with him, uh, Grenvold. Now Wanganoon and Liptak. Smart still swoops on it like he does so often. Deep in the pocket, drop punt, centering kick. Essendon get back, bad bounce, chance for Whitney. Still Whitney, the handball to nobody. Not good footy there, and Essendon concede a behind. A big chance there, bad bounce for the Bombers, and they were able to get away with it. Still limping a bit, Wanganin, which is a worry for Essendon. Well, he's been a bit quiet today, really, hasn't he, Bruce? Not his... Kicks and four hand passes, but he's got the same influence as he's had uh, right throughout the finals. He was shifted pretty early, Bernie. Yeah, he was. I thought he had an influence in this quarter. Off half back for a while. Kick in. Wigney gets underneath. Tregenza at the back's got Jarman inside. He's got a couple of options here. Decides to take Ola Renshaw on and does it. And then chips away towards Modra. Fletcher goes very early. Liptak tried to get back. Handball away. Why flat under pressure? And out of play. So Modric with five first half goals. Hasn't really got into the game in this uh, third quarter with Adelaide being um, out of play. Chukenza really could have gone for home there, Bruce, because Modric wasn't leading. He was kicking to a stationary target. Liptak went without it. Grenvold comes away from half back. Very, very ordinary kick. He was under a little bit of pressure, but he got no penetration. But Essendon combined in the centre of the ground. Some of it. Good kick Mercury. Mercury looks for Salmon. Is that 50 metres? Oh, that hurts, Simon. He put the knees in, but he didn't have to do it. He's hurt himself too, Pittman, I think. Well, Pittman had that knee problem in that first half. Oh, that was an excellent diving mark, though, by Salmon, wasn't it? Well, the crowd obviously saying, well, what about it? Because uh, Fletcher, it happened to Fletcher in the first half. Let's see this again. Mark, Mark, and... Yes, 50 metres. I'm with you. 50 metres. Anyway, Salmon's got the football, impressive stats, a chance to kick his fourth goal. I just don't know how necessary it was to land right on top of him, Robbo. No. 23 points is the advantage, so Paul Salmon can bring it back to 17, and he does just that. Four goals now for Paul Salmon. Tony Modra is the leading goal scorer on the ground with five. There's Paul Salmon, two goals in this quarter. It could so easily have been three. He missed an easy one. Oh, look, I don't think uh, Pittman too much. Not too many worries there about what his uh, intentions were there with Pittman. Just dropping the knees right into Paul Salmon. Fortunately, it made no difference with that Salmon shot at goal. Just under five minutes remaining in the third quarter. Essendon 11 8, Adelaide 13 13. We'll kick 5 2 the Bombers to 1 1 in this quarter. Come right back into the game. Wren and Somerville. Salmon with four goals. Buick taps it forward long. Watson caught by Jarman that time. Watson well done. Held his ground against the odds. Buick's always dangerous. 
Still dangerous. You'd give him a chance. Look. Not a bad free kick, though. It means he's now going to kick it 50 metres plus. Bickley legging when Buick seemingly was away. He could have been home, though. It's a very important free kick, wasn't it? Yeah. Let's have a look at this again. Desperation there by Bickley. Now, that is uh, a professional free kick, I suppose you call those Robbo. I know it's uh, not in the rules of the game, but you really think he deserves 50 metres with that. I do. Tech 50 metres? Well, no. it's not in the rules of the game, but in the spirit of the game, the guy's away, it's illegal. He's going to kick a goal anyway. Ford of Buick. This, I think it's important to note now that in the second turn, Adelaide kicked five goals eight to that right hand end. One wonders whether there might be just a slight advantage going down to that end of the ground. Well, I remember Watson's floating goal early, but yeah. you also wonder just how many chances that they had in that second quarter. They yeah. probably should have been ten in front. Exactly. exactly. There's that free kick again. And technically, what is a trip? Yes. <laughs> if you want to get pedantic about it, I suppose. Well, they've made a real surge now, Essendon. So what can Adelaide do to answer it? Lick tap, run down by O'Donnell, gets his kick away. Whitney can't control it. Chris Danaher, chance for Modra, flips it into the path of Brown. Good buck by Fletcher, yeah, but he's left him. Modra on his own. Modra's kicked to the goal front. German, well done, he had his eyes on it. Well, Brown's hurt behind play there too with that uh, tackle, if you call it a tackle from Fletcher. Well, that was an excellent mark taken by Andrew Jarman. Seven kicks, ten handballs, and now a chance to kick Adelaide's 14th goal. So Scotty Lee coming off the ground again, but that is a good grab. Jarman eyes only for the ball. He attacked the ball. He was about the only one. The others were worried about bodying. Scotty Lee off, and Wiedemann on again for the Crows. Well, Andrew Jarman, you'd really expect him to kick this. Oh, a shocking kick. Richard, one of the most efficient players in the competition, and he misses from 15 metres. 12 8 to 13 14. Hard to understand, isn't it? Hard to understand. Finals pressure, that's about all you could put it down to, Robbo. Yeah. We'd get out there on Tuesday night and you wouldn't miss one from that area of the ground. Flood goes wide. Anderson in the front spot. Cowthorpe, who's gone on to Anderson this term. Wiedemann tapped the forward. Somerville looks for the boundary line and finds it. Well, you look back at a couple in the second quarter. Wiedemann sprayed two or three. Wren ran into an open goal and missed. Jarman missing that one. 13 14 to 12 8. Smart goes. Bickley, left hand handball, gave it away to O'Donnell. To Denham. And the bombers are away again. Denham stretching McGuinness. In fact, running away from him. Oh, how far did he run? Goes to Salmon. Wren gets back. Couldn't take it. Chance here for Rusciuto. Important play here with two and a half minutes remaining in this term. Ola Renshaw's had a good term on Tregenza. And Tregenza keeps it in and now out of play. Down to the last two minutes in the third quarter. Essendon within two goals. They were seven behind at half time. I'll tell you, he's done a pretty good job today, and that's Denham on McGuinness. McGuinness has had 11 and 4. He has been averaging about 28. Denham's had 22 posses himself. Long, Ola Renshaw. Here are the two in question. Denham and McGuinness. McGuinness went to ground, pushing the back. It looked like there, no free kick. McDermott in trouble. Tregenza tries to break the tackle. Here's McGuinness again. Good looking kick to Liptak. Liptak can size up a couple of chances. Smart now. Modra goes for inflection to cut it off. Chance here for Bickley or Jarman and Somerville. A big ball coming up. Somerville off the ground. Will it go out? Modra gets back. He'll have some time to set it up from 50 metres, goes short, looking for Wigney, oh well played, just got rid of Flood too easily, hip and shoulder yeah, Flood far too easily, wasn't it Bruce, far too easily, body on body there, Wigney Modra's done very well, five goals and a couple of handles, nice kick there kept his head, just an important kick oh, huge kick isn't it if he could slot this through, Good three goal handy. advantage what, uh, three quarter time we're inside the, the last minute. You tried the banana, wouldn't you, uh, Robbo? Oh, if yeah. you could kick the banana. Well, Has he learnt that over there? Well, he's going on the left boot. Misses. He's given. The whole lot. Well, the banana was really the kick there. Affectionately known in Adelaide as a chick side. Chick side punt. Chick side punt, definitely, Robbo. Bit of a banana, isn't it? I think so. We've been kicking her for a few years. 
Ah, yes, they've taught... Uh, that kick has been very, very well used over the years. Flood, his kick. Wren punches it back. But O'Donnell chops it off. Just seconds left. Short kick, Nick Hugh. Takes a punt. Low. Oh, did it well. If they mark this, with seconds left, they can't take the mark. Messini, Hewitt, Siren sounds, no score. Missed anyway. So I get there in for an absolute cliffhanger. With 30 minutes of the preliminary final left to play, Adelaide lead by 12 points, 13-14 to 12-8. Scoring their way back into the game in the third quarter, kicking six goals to one. Still in it, trailing by 12 points. We pick it up at the start of the last turn. Brian Sheen about to start the final turn. What excitement here at the MCG. An enormous roar goes up. Adelaide leads by two goals. 13-14 to 12-8. Essendon coming home with a wet sail. Wren gets the tap. Oh, Long held it up beautifully against Bickley. O'Donnell off the ground. The denim it was. Long again, who's been absolutely brilliant. Quick kick away by Rashuda. Long shirt too. And Bickley dumped him after he kicked that ball. A little bit of strife there, Michael Long. Anderson from centre wing. Long running onto it. You can see that he is uh, not 100%. Grenfold goes to ground. 24 free kicks to 13 in favour of Essendon. There he is, it's still in a lot of strife there, Michael Long. There he is, dragged after he kicked that ball. Looked as if the left knee may have buckled a little bit underneath him. Well, he did well to get out there and make a contest with Mark Bickley. And good play there by McCurry. Tried to get it to Calthorpe, but Andrew Jarman chips in. He kicks it in towards the centre of the ground. They must take a mark here. No, the possession is important, though. Whitney away for Tregenza. Tregenza's short kick. Who's on the end of this? Scott Hodges. What can he do? Kick. Not all that good. Modra left it behind. Flood. In short, Somerville. Short kick again. Not too bad. O'Donnell will take it over because he really had no one to give it to if he'd have taken possession. Yeah, good smother there in that passage of play also by Dustin Fletcher on that uh, kick by Scott Hodges. Boundary throw in about 70 metres around from the Adelaide goal. The first goal all that important. O'Donnell smothered. Got the hand pass away. Calthorpe caught. Well done, Andrew Jarman. Little possession there for McGuinness, then Anderson. And if they get a goal out of this, they can nearly thank Andrew Jarman again. Top effort, Modra. Little kick. Too far. Michael Long takes the mark. I think it was meant for Whitney. Chris Danaher. Handball over the top. Denham. Essendon taking a few risks. Denham runs up near the wing. He's third bounce. Handball over the top. Creativity good. James Hurd. A high kick. Back there is Rashudo. Couldn't take the mark. Goes after it again. Got a little toe poke to it. Ben Hart's in trouble. Kick off the ground. Too far. Free kick to Westman. It was good play out of defence. They chanced their hand there, Essendon. Michael Long handballing quickly, getting the run. Denham with about three or four bounces. Wasn't a great finish by James Hurd. But unfortunately for the Crows, that kick coming off the boot of Ben Hart sailing over the boundary line. Well, it's Buick. Pretty good kick for goal. Oh, he's got it! He's kicked five. A magnificent kick by Buick. As we see Scott Lee on the bench. And Essendon pull to within one straight kick of the Crows. Well, he's a great finisher, Darren Buick. He has kicked five goals for the afternoon. 50 goals for the season. Second only to Paul Salmon who has kicked now 60 for the season. He kicked two fabulous goals last week against the West Coast from similar positions. 13-8 to 13-14, Essendon coming home. Bickley's handball over the top. Tregenza gives it off to McGuinness, running wide, goes wide. Flood should take it. Where's Hodges and Modra? They're wilds behind at the moment. Flood goes away. Neither Hodges or Modra are moving too freely at the moment. I can tell you, Hodges lumbering. As Ola Renshaw takes it out of play. And three crows there around him too, so fortunately he went out of bounds there, Bruce. Well, that was a pretty ordinary uh, delivery by McGuinness, did you think, in the, in the finish? 
He's been forced wide a lot again today, yeah. Tony McGuinness. He said that happened last week against Carlton, but I think he's been forced wide also again today. Denham over the top of it. Jarman held on to. Gives the handball away to McGuinness. Turns back inside to Tregenza, to McDermott, trying to set something up. McDermott goes towards Maynard, now up forward. Thompson at the back of him. Taken by Thompson, had a tremendous third quarter. He's been a great lift to his team. O'Donnell streams away. Watson provides a path. Still O'Donnell through the centre square, unchallenged in the end. Salmon underneath it. Pittman under pressure. McCurry to Buick. Great tackle on Buick. Masiti, McCurry, Pittman with him. Wren there and out of play. So the Bombers within a goal. 76,000. 380 people here. They did well then, those Adelaide boys, under a lot of pressure. So Pittman, up over the top, tries to get it to, to Tregenza. Did some good work put in there by Calthorpe as Hodges comes from the ground to be replaced by Wiedemann. So Hasn't the given pressure. them a great uh, opportunity, has he, on the forward line, I don't think, this afternoon. He's whipped him off on a couple of occasions very quickly, Scott Hodges. Here's a chance for Essendon. Buick may get his sixth goal. Now he misses to the left. Free kick to Buick. He's going to get a free kick. There's push after he kicked it there, the umpire indicating. Well, this kick will level the scores if it's straight. The umpire in question there is uh, Darren Goldspink. Let's have a look at this in replay. A little bit of a shove there from Rashudo. Not a lot in it, Robbo. Well, you're not allowed to do it, are you? No, I mean, it's, it's just technically against, it's a free kick. Rules. So Buick has a second chance from just over 20 metres. Pretty well straight in front. So you would nearly write this down for a goal. second chance there. Yeah, not a malicious shot there from uh, Rusciuto. But it has given the chance for Buick to kick his sixth and level the scores. What a second half performance by the Bombers. Scores are level at the MCG. Lip tack out of the centre, Grenville. Now Smart's on the back line and Whitney at centre half forward. I reckon that's a worry for the Crows. Surely Smart's still their best option as a forward. Tregenza. Jarman. Smart to run it through centre wing. Goes high and long. Modder in the front spot. Fletcher sits on him. At the back flood. Snared by Thompson. Good tackle. Wiedemann. Maybe Bruce is looking for the run out of halfback, which Nigel Smart can provide, but I still think I agree with you that he is a better option playing at centre half forward than Stuart Wigney. And he kicked one goal since half time. You've got to kick goals to win. Eight of the last nine goals for the Bombers. Wigney gets the tap. Lip tack runs deep into the pocket, under pressure, left foot. Well, very loose and very poor without rubbing it in. He's kicked two out of bounds on the fall and kicked one goal too. Last two shots for goal have both been out on the fall. Wagon in to bring it in. 14-8 to 13-14. Good kick by Gavin Wanganeen, wide to the wing. And an excellent mark taken by the much discussed player, Nigel Smart. He's been called to play on. And he tries the torpedo punt. Didn't quite come off. Is that a mark? No, play on. Mogler's got the football. Dustin Fletcher is there, but the umpire will bounce. Only Modra quite happy with that decision, so obviously not even near a mark. No draw in a preliminary final. Extra time to be played. Remember that. Grenville close to the boundary line. Wenganin can't control it. And we'll have another boundary throw in. It's about 30 metres around from the Crows' goal. So any score by them will give them the lead. There's still plenty of time left. 18 minutes. Graham Corns, the fingernails just uh, lessening with every second. Wanganin, chance for Maynard. No, free kick to Wanganin in the back. Bit fortunate, I would have thought. 28 free kicks to 13. 
Grenville takes the mark just inside the 50 metre area. Adelaide's left half forward. To centre wing. Wren's big stretch takes the mark. Gives it off to McGuinness. They want to lift from McGuinness in the last quarter. Centering kick. Modra sets himself. Going high with him was Flood. Waiting for it, Thompson. Flood over the top. Thompson tries to get through. Gets it to Wanganeen beautifully. Wanganeen chips it over to Denham, who's been great to Wanganeen. Essendon go forward of centre. The kick is a long one. Buick! Oh. And his name written on it. Couldn't take it. Salmon goes to ground. Hart gets back. Gives away a quick handball. Smart with a bit of time. Stops, props, goes wide. Jarman versus Wanganeen. Jarman pushes him in the back. Free kick, Wanganeen. Very undisciplined by Andrew Jarman, I would have thought. Yes, and very obvious, Robbo. The left hand in the back of Wanganeen. To O'Donnell. Things happening for the Bombers now. O'Donnell. He's called the play on. To Flood. Well Broke, done. Yeah, broke Wiedemann very easily. Flood to centre half forward. Rusciuto, well played. Ran away that time from Buick and took the mark. He's a good young player. The big chance, Robbo, was that last mark dropped by Buick, wasn't it? Yeah, he was word. in beautiful position to take it. Well, there's still a chance here, Adelaide. They've got possession of the football, which is the biggest problem, but a shocking kick by Tony McGuinness. You'd realise that he probably didn't have much to kick to, but... Uh, well, most was, unlike Tony McGuinness, yes, isn't it? Yes, it was. He's been a great little player all year, one of the favourites for the Brownlow. Oh, he's a good interception by Tregenza. And a great smother, brilliant smother, Wanganeen. Jarman with the football, caught by Thompson, could be penalised? No. Oh, boy. And Wanganeen may have hurt himself in that uh, fantastic smother. See Smart drifting down to centre half forward. Here it is. Tregenza doing some terrific work, but then Wanganeen, what a smother that was. Well, the bounce of the ball just forward of the wing in Adelaide's attacking half. Ruck contest taken by Bickley. Very awkward left foot kick. Bounce is awkward. Wiedemann nearly swooped on it. Smart was the tackler. In goes Wiedemann again to really rev it up there on the 50 metre line. Mark Thompson there for Essendon. And it was really good stuff by Wiedemann. Ooh. Well, no comment. Darren Goldspink and Brian Sheehan bounce just inside 50 metres. Essendon get clear. Bomber Thompson, short Denham marks. And a great play today, Denham. Swings around onto his left foot. Always running to set a half forward the kick. Front spot Heard. Heard goes with a chip to Salmon. Pittman gets into his back, thumps it away. Salmon after it, out of play. Scores a level in the preliminary final. It wasn't a great, a great kick there from James Heard. Shot up a little bit too high, didn't it, for Paul Salmon, giving Pittman the chance to thump it away. Seven goals in front of the Crows at halftime. Dead set level here. Salmon. Pittman. Still Salmon. Now Ben Hart. Squeeze a little kick away. Bickley got an awkward bounce. Handball gave it away in a hurry. McDermott against the flow court. Gets the handball away. Maynard gives it to Long. Long stages. Watson important. O'Donnell should go. Goes and puts it through. The Bombers are in front. For the first time since the 12 minute mark of the first quarter. Well, this has been an amazing comeback by the Bombers as Joe Massetti comes off the ground to be replaced by Derek Kickett. Enormous pressure and great work by the Bombers forwards. Desperate to keep that ball in that forward line. Maybe a little bit of a high tackle there by Mark McCurry on Chris McDermott, but here's the finish from O'Donnell. Well, the character of Adelaide will really be tested now. We've got 14 minutes left, and Essendon have the lead. O'Donnell again, Denham, very quick possession. Picked up beautifully by Hurd. Oh, close great to take, the wasn't ground. It? That great was take, Robbo. A man with a crook hamstring. He'll go for goal. The kick is very long. No mark Ooh. taken. Oh, nearly Calthorpe. He had two goes at it. McDermott appealing for the free kick. Nothing happening. Bounce of the ball in the goal square. Three metres from Essendon's goal. This has Bombers been a chance again. Absolutely amazing turnaround by the Bombers. Seven goals down at half time. Gee, they've shown some character, haven't they, in this second half? Well, the reward is a chance to play in a grand final. 
Scott Lee on the bench with Scott Hodges. Adelaide bench looking a little anxious now. They have to work to get the lead back. Buick, wide, O'Donnell misses it. Green Bowden, lip tap, into the path of Prosciutto. Watson worked very, very hard in that contest. McDermott spills for lip tap. Handball, Prosciutto, does well. Kicks it wide towards the wing. He wants this to go out, and it will. So with 13 minutes left, Essendon lead by six points. Boundary throw in, O'Donnell. Tackle by Lip Tap, didn't have the ball. No, Advantage is with Essendon. Buick has the football. He's kicked into the board, centre-half forward. Ben Hart couldn't take the mark. Could have nearly been awarded a free kick. Salmon gets the ball clear. Kelthorpe smothered. Kick it, leaves it behind. Goes after it again. Paddling the ball in front of himself. No free kick. And the umpire surely will have to come in and bounce. Gary O'Donnell, very important in this turnaround also, Robbo. 12 kicks and 11 hand passes. Ricky Olorenshaw is coming to the game also in this second half. 10 kicks and 10 hand passes. 12 minutes remaining. Smart is at centre-half forward for Adelaide. Renton wins the tap. Hurts did very well. Kick around the body. Bouncing ball. Still in play. Salmon. Still Salmon. Pittman puts a tackle on McDermott. Can't quite break the way. Essendon with a chance. Watson snap shot. It's a goal. Is it? Across the face. Missing. Well, that would have tested the old stand here at the MCG. Had that gone through. One goal, one to Timmy Watson. But after half time, it's been nine goals, three to Essendon. One goal, two to the Crows. And an important point, Bruce. Just breaks that uh, slight deadlock. Seven points now, their advantage. McDermott straight down the centre. Tregenza running onto it. Still Tregenza. Quick give to Jarman. Jarman to Modra. Oh, that's good. Beautiful rated kick, wasn't it? Remember against Hawthorne when the Hawks looked home and hosed and Liptak kicked that goal against the run as Maynard comes off for Lee. Adelaide didn't lay down that day and they're still in with a big chance here. Jarman's finish was perfect as it was earlier in the match. Yeah, they went the shortest possible route to get to this uh, kick from Tony Modra. Coming in for goal number six for Tony Modra if he kicks this. Buick's got six at the other end. Modra back, drop punt, all oh, close. It's got it. Six for Modra. Adelaide's first goal since the 16 minute mark of the third quarter, and only their second goal in the second half. Awesome, Terrific game of football, both sides being tested to the limit. Wren, Long, O'Donnell, a quick kick. Centre half forward contest. Ball rebounds, kick it. Shot for goal, no, free kick. Going to Adelaide to be taken possibly by Ben Hart. Didn't quite see what that was for. But that free kick ledger still looking. Very, very uneven. 30 to 14. Ben Hart, wide. Looks for Wren. Can't take the mark. The big fellow goes after it. Taken by Wanganen. Grabbed when he got rid of the ball. Now the advantage is with Essendon. Watson has it. Beautiful kick by Watson. Heard on his own. Hart had come down the ground. Well and waited, gave wasn't James Heard just that little bit of space. Yeah, well waited. There's the free kick. Uh, against Bickley, advantage paid. Tim Watson hasn't had a... Huge influence on the game, but what he does is all class Tim Watson. Well, another important kick. Can James Hurd kick a goal this time? Looks pretty good. He's happy with it. James Hurd's first goal for the day. And Essendon lead again by seven points. Yes, here's a replay. Bit of a thump away there by Somerville. Wanganeen dashes out of defence. Bickley, a, a professional free kick there again by Bickley, but spilling to Timmy Watson. Advantage paid on this occasion. Professional finishing. Professional free kick, which has cost him a second goal for the match from Bickley. Yes, exactly. Exactly. He did the other one on Buick. And you keep goaling for professional free kicks. I wonder how professional <laughs> they are. Good point. 16 9, 14 14. Big moment here in the game. O'Donnell's been magnificent in the second half. Holds it up. I bet that hurt when he dumped into the hard turf. 
<laughs> well, we saw Michael Long get a hard one earlier on in this quarter. Well, they reckon it's like concrete talking to some of the reserves players. Penetrometer, 2.2. That's lightning fast, Robbo. That's concrete. Wren, Long, tries to get through. Bickley, Hart, in trouble, caught. Handball away, German, good handball. McGuinness, centering kick all right for Modra. Goes early, chance for Liptak. Still with Liptak. With an opportunity now, goes back inside, smart. And Liptak, oh, trouble here. Symbolic of what's happened in this second half. Danaher to Cowthorpe, they're going to be hurt here, Adelaide. Cowthorpe steaming down the ground with four bounces. And then goes short to Mercury. Buick, Rusciuto. Now Visca, Adelaide with numbers. Visca going to ground, Adelaide in trouble. Mercury holding it up. And hasn't the turnaround been complete there? Yeah, it's very ordinary hand pass, wasn't it? In the forward line, spilling in front of Nigel Smart, made it very difficult for him. Uh, Centre breaks in this last quarter, again in favour of Essendon. It's been 10 to 4 since half time. Sean Wren takes the ball, Andrew Jarman, and finishes with Tregenza. His kick in towards half forward. Nigel Smart can't take the mark. Grenvold running onto it, Brown. He can handball it away. No, he goes for goal and misses. He well, could have given it to Modra. Yeah, but then Modra had his back to the goal there, Robbo. So the Brown really should not have missed that from 20 metres. A very very important, kick. very important miss. Oh, Greg Anderson in trouble off the ground. Well, he hasn't really been an important player in the last quarter. David Flood, 16-9 to 14-15. Still just one straight kick the difference. Players down on this uh, near side, O'Donnell and Calthorpe, but he goes in short and finds Fletcher. Fletcher can come wide. There's plenty of players down here still in front of us. And he eventually goes long. Looks for Somerville. Good kick. Somerville marks behind Maynard. And as a player on his own, have a look at this, the captain's got away. He can give the hand pass to O'Donnell, and he does. O'Donnell running beautifully. Jarman is the chaser, but O'Donnell kicks it to the goal front. Salmon can't mark. Could be a big turnaround here. Visca can go down the far side of the ground. Player in the middle is Wiedemann, but he goes long. Looks for McGuinness. Important possession here. Denham gives away a free kick. McGuinness will take it. 16 and 6 for McGuinness. And Denham, on the other hand, 15 and 12. So they've had a great battle. Tony McGuinness. Can Adelaide get a goal? Which would level the scores once again. Goes in short. Nigel Smart's oh. made good position away from Greenville. David Greenville moving David, 20 metres, Robbo. Too much in a critical last seven or eight minutes of a preliminary final. Modra running back to the goal square. Nigel Smart. Summing it up, goes into the pocket, looks for Whitney, but too short. Ranganine, easy chest mark. To not the right option, was no, it? No, shocking option, Bruce, going into that pocket. Poor kick, poor option. And there wasn't even a committed lead into the pocket. Well, surely so I don't know why he kicked it there. Modra's been great today, but surely it's uh, his responsibility to make the big move. Now Tregenza chips it cleverly to Weedham and Adelaide well and truly in this game. They've stopped the Essendon flow, they're coming back. High ball, Modra will take a fly. In the front spot was Wren. Goes to ground, Danaher and Liptak out of play. Anderson situation, Max Stevens. Greg Anderson, uh, Bruce, has a thigh injury. It's not a hamstring, a thigh injury and will not be taking any further part in the game. Somerville and Wren. Somerville punches it out again. One goal the difference. Six minutes remaining in the preliminary final. The time to really stand up now. Wren, who has played his heart out, smart from the side. Chris Danaher's had a quiet one. Smart did very well, still was smart. Handball wild though, Danaher straight to the boundary line out of play. Essendon keeping the ball away from the Adelaide goal square with five and a half minutes remaining. Well, it'll be an interesting five and a half minutes, won't it? Wren doing the ruck work, up over the top was Fletcher, bashes it outside 50 metres. Ola Renshaw takes it over. So, momentarily out of the danger zone for the Bombers. Dustin Fletcher playing on Modra. Modra's kicked six goals. Adelaide have kicked 14. Somerville handball. Visca. McGuinness. Caught. And 
Brown should be penalised. No. Gee, I thought that was a good tackle, Robbo. I was with you. Free kick to Visco. Oh, sorry, Visco before, before that. Okay. It? Yep. So Adelaide can breathe again. Mark Visca to kick them back to within scoring distance. Goes into the pocket. Maynard punched away there by Calthorpe was a good effort. And we'll have another boundary throw in as Kickett comes off the ground to be replaced by Joe Masidi. Opportunity here for Adelaide. Maynard, snapshot for goal. Doesn't get the distance. Modra, no, too early. Should have been free kick. Danaher's got the football. And in the back, he'll take the free kick. Encouraged there by Chris Danaher. Played a great game last week against the West Coast Eagles. Put his body in and deserved the free kick. From full back, Essendon leading by a goal. With four minutes remaining in the preliminary final. Wide. Bird goes up. Had a very good last quarter. He's really turned it around for himself. At half back. O'Donnell's very short note. Decides to come out wide. McCurry. Punch away from uh, Visca. Buick. Six goals today. What a player he's been. Out of play at centre wing. One goal separating the two teams. Three and a half minutes to go. Heard goes for it with Bickley. Gives it away towards Cowthorpe. Maynard over the top. Long. Cowthorpe jumps on top of it. Wiedemann looks for a free kick. Not getting it. And again a bounce at centre wing. They're very tired, these players. A break either way. So important here. Will it be the Bombers to sew it up with another goal? Or Adelaide to tie the scores? Wren and Watson. The kick by Smother by McCurry. The handball by Rusciuto. Wren got uh, a hard bump. Kick away by Denham. And out of play at centre wing. Where'd you go? They kicked that one from Sean Denham. Essendon well, would be very happy to have the ball out of bounds for a while here, Robbo, with the clock running down. Well, with really nothing happening, they've got the ball nearly the length of the ground, haven't they? Boundary throw in. Heard. McDermott. Handball wide, McGuinness, no, Mercury the tackler. Boundary umpire will throw it in. We're down under three minutes. The Adelaide fans need to barrack a little harder. Their team trail. Michael Long bashes it close to the boundary line. Once again, it goes over. Precious seconds ticking away. Essendon have the lead by six points. The ball at left half forward for the Bombers. Sean Wren gets the tap out. Not to anyone in particular. In after it went Bickley. And the umpire will call again for a bounce. Michael Long trying to assert his authority. Comes up with the football. Time remaining up in the left-hand corner. And the clock's still running down, so precious seconds being used up here. Wren and Hurd. Ball comes clear. McDermott just gets his foot to it. Wide to the wing, free kick going to Eston, but taken by yeah, Kelthorpe, yeah, yeah. not much in that. Right, I don't know about that free kick. 32 free kicks to 16. But a very important one nonetheless. Kelthorpe, just holding it up, which is good. He's only a young player too. 1 minute 30. Kelthorpe kicks it to within goal scoring distance for Eston. High flyer ring, couldn't mark. Salmon with the footy, Buick. He's kicked six. The kick slews off the side of his boot. Ola Renshaw favoured by the bounce. He's got it. Dispossessed by Tregenza. Very important possession here. Taken by Brown. Wangamin's got it. Oh, Did he have the football? One wonders. Away goes Ola Renshaw. Two Wanganin. In short, Watson. Shorter again, Mercury. No, Watson gets around. Forced to kick with the left. It slews off the side of his boot. Set a half back for Adelaide. Very important possession. Watson's got it. Watson goes for goal. Universe. Back in the last down. Essendon are home in the preliminary final. Thanks to a goal kicked by Timmy Watson. Graham Corn shakes his head in disbelief. After being seven goals in front at half time. Well, he should shake his head too because what a turnaround it's been by the Bombers. 11 goals. Since the half-time break, Timmy Watson kicking his second. He kicked one in the first quarter, and that one a very important one to seal the game for the Bombers. Inside the last 45 seconds, Essendon two goals in front. 
Oh, lip tack, who to? Smart, caught, savaged almost. Lip tack again, Wanganin who's played a brilliant second half, out wide. McGuinness, but time's going to beat Adelaide now. They've had plenty of chances. Still McGuinness. Goes to the goal square with a long one. Modra at the back, and it's through from behind. So Adelaide up to 14, 16 to 17, 9. And that will be the last score in the match. Essendon has qualified for its 26th grand final. And next week will be playing Carlton. It's been one of the most remarkable games in the long history of this great game. To be seven goals behind at halftime. That's it. performance eight of them 20 or under dead set gone at half time no way out the door was locked in a remarkable comeback the bombers kicked 11 goals to two after half time to convert a 42 point deficit into an 11 point win Buick kicked six, Salmon kicked four, and for the Crows, Modra kicked six. At the MCG, 76,380 people. Well, Scott Palmer at the offices of the Sunday Herald Sun. Scotty, how did the Bombers uh, pull up? Very well indeed, and Kevin Sheedy said tonight that he'll hardly train them, train them at all this week. They'll be like Olympic athletes. He'll just give them a little bit of training, a little bit of running, a little bit of kicking, but not much hard work at all. He said, we're going to draw back now until next uh, Saturday. The official list says they're injury free, is that right? Yes, although uh, Hills came off with a leg injury, didn't go back, and Long had his uh, shoulder in plaster tonight, but Sheedy disguising them well tonight. And there were people who apparently were saying that Sheedy's speech at halftime was something. Well, Timmy Watson said it's probably one of the greatest speeches he's ever heard. He said some of the old timers in the room actually had tears in their eyes. He said he spoke of the positive things and he said, I think Sheedy is getting better as he gets older. He said he gave us the opportunity. He said, here is the opportunity for greatness. Now grab it now and go out with it. And they came from the seven goals behind. Will it go down in history like Barassi's speech in 1970? It will. The scores were pretty close on that. Timmy Watson, too, he made a terrific comeback today. He really put the finishing touches to it. And Kevin Sheedy said what we should have done in the first place was giving him $40,000, send him into the moon somewhere to do some coaching and then bring him back because that's what I want to do. He went to the moon last year, he worked here. <laughs> <laughs> what about Graham Corns? Well, naturally disappointed. He said that's two finals that have slipped away, but he was very, very complimentary of his team. He said they, weren't, they didn't choke. He almost said it, but he didn't. He said, we just sort of let it slip away. We faded in that second half. We lost sight of what we're all about. But to come to third place, he said, not good enough, but I suppose you can't be uh, really disappointed about this game, although they are. They're very disappointed. OK, but, quickly, news on Carlton, who trained today? Yes, uh, Peter Dean only did three quarters work today. Uh, the Carlton team will have to make up their mind whether he's prepared to play. Uh, the Colin Kinnear said tonight that um, it'll be up to Dean probably before even the selectors get to him. But uh, Tim Powell got through well, so it looks like a full complement of players out there at Carlton. OK, Scotty, we'll hear from you on the paper and see you in the morning. OK, keep on punching, Drew. OK, thank you. And of course, next week in the grand final, it is Carlton and Essendon in the big one. What a scenario. Good night to you all. Coming up next, Inspector Morse investigates a case of revenge in the settling of the sun. Followed by Western drama with The Unforgiven. Hi, this is Bruce McAvenny. Coming up on Seasons, we talk to the legendary Carl Lewis, king of track and field. And ten years on, we remember the pure ecstasy of winning the America's Cup. And consider those responsible, from Bond through to Bertram and Lexham. These and other fascinating reports Coming up on Seasons. That's 9.30 Thursday on 7. The name of the game is a 
Australia.